Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Doc Ed Padama and this time we are going to discuss the research instrument used for quantitative and qualitative research. So before we go on to our discussion, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Doc Ed Padama and click that notification bell to alert you when a new video has been uploaded just like this one. And if you have already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please click the like button for this particular video. So going on to our discussion, there are varied uh, types of research instruments that you can use and these instruments make sure that they are aligned and relevant to the research that you are conducting. So there are different types of research method. You have quantitative and qualitative research and for these different types of researches your instrument should follow the type of method or research method that you are using so if you're using quantitative research the instrument that you should use should fall under the classification of this type of research method it's the same with qualitative there are also different types of instruments that you can use for qualitative research okay in general the definition of research instrument is a tool used to collect and gather data the main goal and objective of an instrument is used to collect and gather data what particular data data relevant related to the study the research that you are conducting so a good research instrument should have the following characteristics it should be validated and it should be reliable. So validation and reliability of the instrument is important. And we are going to relate validation and reliability on the next part of this discussion. So validation will um, determine the relevance of the content. If you're doing content validation, the relevance of the content and the appropriateness of the content of your instrument to the research that you are conducting is the content or are the contents of your uh, instrument uh, relevant related to and will answer the main objective of your research that remains to be validated okay and specifically that is called content validation aside from content validation there are also other types of validation or classifications of validations that you can use so these are done by experts. Usually in the graduate school, we require them to have at least three experts validating their instrument under content validation. Now reliability is the consistency of the instrument. So if your instrument or if your research will be uh, computed or used, your instrument will be used in other researches, the, the consistency in terms of the output or result of your instrument should be present, okay? So there's no discrepancy with regard to the first result and the second result if somebody would try to uh, uh, double check the result of your, uh, the result or the output of your instrument. So this is what we uh, call validation, the difference between validation and reliability. But most of the time, Specifically, in our institution, we focus on the validation of the instrument. Now, general classifications of research instruments are the following. The general classifications of research instruments are the following. So, you have number one and number two and number three. So, you often hear the term standardized instrument and then you have the researcher-made instrument and then you have I don't know if you're familiar with the third one, modified standardized instrument. So let's start with the first one. When we talk about standardized instrument, this is a tool used to gather or collect data that has already been used in other studies or other researcher, researches um, created by that particular writer or researcher. So again, a standardized instrument has already been used, utilized in other studies. Therefore, this particular instrument has already been validated. Okay? Again, a standardized instrument has already been used in other studies. Therefore, it is already validated. Now, 
you you found out that this particular instrument, the standardized instrument, while browsing and looking uh, online, is the same. It has the same domain, the same element as the study that you are conducting, and you want to use this instrument. Is it possible? The answer is yes. You can use the same instrument, but there are ethical considerations and procedures that you need to follow for you to be able to use this instrument. And the first one is to ask permission from the owner. You get your permission. Uh, you get permission from the owner to use the instrument in your study. And usually, these researchers, uh, when asked permission, usually give. Uh, they're, uh, no, they're, uh, they agree to, that you, you can use their instrument in your study. And some of them um, may, may not reply or respond to your request. Uh, usually what we do, there was a case during a defense uh, wherein the author of the instrument did not reply to the email, to the request. The panel decided that just as long as you have done due process and due diligence in asking permission, then the, the instrument was uh, accepted by the panel to be, to be used. Okay, so again, th these are the sample situations uh, that may incur or occur during the use of this standardized instrument. So that's number one, no need for validation, no need for validation when you use what we call a standardized instrument. Now, <coughs> the second one is what we call the researcher-made instrument. The, um, literally, according to the title of this particular instrument, this is an instrument created by the researcher since if you did your due diligence and you were not able to look for similar instrument online, relevant, related to the, to the research that you are conducting, then there is no choice but for the researcher to make their own instrument. In this particular instrument, the researcher now needs to conduct validation. The researcher needs to conduct validation. And if it is required by the institution, you also need, if, if they require you to conduct reliability tests, then by all means, you have to go through reliability tests for your instrument. But usually, for researcher-made instrument, validation is required. Okay, then uh, the next one is modified standardized instrument. So if you found an instrument, a standardized instrument that somewhat, in other parts matches the study that you are conducting but there are other parts that you need to modify in order to align the instrument to the study that you are conducting you need to to uh, modify that particular part so uh, the standardized instrument will now undergo uh, specific changes or minimal changes on other parts of the instrument and again the procedure or the process for this is number one is to again ask permission from the owner and then you inform the owner of the standardized instrument that there will be modifications okay and then you give you give um uh, details of these modifications okay and then after that you wait for the uh, approval of the owner of the instrument and then if that has already been approved and you've already implemented the modification this particular instrument now would have to undergo validation since it is not pure a pure standardized instrument or unadulterated instrument that was used in a previous study, then you have to go through the validation process, process again for this modified standardized instrument. So again, these are usually the classifications of general classifications of research instrument. Standardized instrument, researcher made instrument, and modified standardized instrument. And the process and procedure that you need to do when you are utilizing these types of instruments. Now, Going to the different types of instruments used for quantitative and qualitative. So research instruments used for qualitative research are the following. 
qualitative research. Okay, so this is a type of study wherein you gather data in the form of narratives. So narratives refer to processes, story, procedures taken from the respondents. So how do you collect them? Number one, you can use observation, you can use uh, recording, uh, and you can use uh, your, your senses in order to uh, uh, gather data. And then what you have observed, you have to write it down yourself. So you will be the one narrating what you have already observed. So that is observation. Interview, we are very much familiar with interview. So this is usually done through phone or face-to-face. Uh, -face. And then right now, uh, you can also do this online using the video conferencing applications, whether Google Meeting or FaceTime or other video conferencing applications other than what has already been mentioned. So interview is throwing questions individually on a person uh, that you are, uh, uh, that you uh, classify as a respondent to your study and then uh, writing down that particular response of uh, the, the respondent, okay? Or the person that you are interviewing. Okay, the next one is focus group discussion. Focus group discussion is somewhat a type of interview but conducted on a bigger number. So instead of individually interviewing, focus group discussion gathers a group of people and then um, throwing the question to the group and then gathering their responses uh, within that particular time. Okay, so that is what we call a focus group discussion or FGD. Okay, so usually they use the acronym FGD for focus group discussion. And then the other one is document analysis. So document analysis are also known as artifact analysis. So what is available in terms of references or that will serve as your source of data that is already printed or uh, as I've said, an artifact, uh, an object that has uh, uh, been left behind that will serve as a clue for you to be able to gather data. You can gather your, uh, you can gather your data by writing your observation on that particular artifact. Document analysis uh, on a, a particular, literally a document that has been left behind and then you try to go through that document and try to write the narrative of what you have observed on that particular document. So that is what we call document analysis. Okay, the next one, on the next type of uh, research method, which is quantitative research, what uh, common instruments you usually use on this uh, particular method? So you have survey, questionnaire, checklist, and test used for experimental research. Survey, or usually they combine it with questionnaire, survey questionnaire, is the most common type of uh, research instrument. So this is where uh, tables and scales are included in the instrument in order to uh, measure their responses. So when we talk about quantitative earlier, I said, I mentioned in qualitative, this is more on data in the form of narratives. Now, when we talk about quantitative research, this is more on data on the form of uh, measurable uh, values. So, it uses uh, numeric values, it uses scales, and it uses tables. And in order to analyze all of this, you use uh, statistical tools. Okay, so again, survey questionnaires utilizes uh, these tables, uh, scales, wherein you are required to check or tick at least one. And then after that, they would be able to measure your responses. So these are survey questionnaires. Checklist is a, a simpler form wherein there is a question presented and there are options that you can tick at the bottom. So instead of the table form, 
Likert form wherein there are certain numbers that you can use in order to identify your response checklist is a more direct to the point so checklist usually is used for uh, ranking ordering uh, type of research that you are conducting so again test okay this is number four test refers to or you is used for experimental research so if you are conducting an experimental research with which test a particular strategy a strategy in teaching so you would uh, present what we call a pretest and post test in order to measure the learning gains of your respondents okay so again these are the types of instruments used for qualitative and quantitative and again these are the general classifications of these instruments that you can use so again this is where we end our discussion regarding research instruments for quantitative and qualitative research i hope this would be able to help you in writing your research paper and again on the left side of your screen towards the end of this discussion you will be uh, seeing uh, recommended videos that can help you in writing your other parts or the other parts of your research from chapters 1 to chapter 5 and again please do click the subscribe button for my youtube channel and click that notification bell and if you have already subscribed please click like for this particular video thank you very much everyone stay safe god bless and keep learning see you on our next video goodbye